Right, Mike, we got to the stage. If you've got your kayak, a nice bare rigged scupper pro, and we're going to rig it now. It shouldn't take too long, about an hour. Rig it for UK kayak fishing, which means we're going to put anchor trolleys on it, both sides. We're going to put forward facing rod holders on it as well. And uh, a little backrest, which will be quite nice. Some side mount carry handles, because for some reason they stopped putting them on. And a paddle keep on the other side, so we've got them giving you the choice of either. So we've got this nice scupper pro here. We've taken off all the deck lines because we don't need them. Because the more lines you've got, the more lines you can catch. So if we just have a nice look, these were the original ocean kayak and still arguably the best. Fantastic sea keeping, nice and narrow, great in rough water. So we're gonna crack on with that. So these are the parts we need. We've got two forward facing rod holders. We're using Scotty style flush mounts and they'll pop in and clip in. I normally use ram mounts, but uh, they become prohibitively expensive. We're gonna put some Solus reflective tape on in case the search parties ever need to come out. There's a backrest, which I had a few of those kicking around from some old Nicky kayaks. We've got the rigging lines for the anchor trolley. We've got the bungees fitted with the pulley blocks. We've got the side mount carry handles. We've got carabiners and stainless rings, an extra paddle keep. We've got our inline cleats and we've got some pad eyes as well all with the trifold rivets so we're going to get started on that and see how we go okay so i've fitted the solus tape while waiting to get everything else all ready so i've put a bit at the bow on the top there's a bit down on the sort of just above the water line there in the middle another bit at the stern above the water line I've done the same on both sides that's the easy stuff so the pad to go in here we'll rivet in four rivets we've made the holes so what we're going to do is keep it nice and nice and neat nice and tidy that gives a bit of traction and a bit of uh, protection to your back as well it'll actually be a better fit that way round. then the right will be upside down and we can't have upside down writing even though that's mike's natural um balancing skills in action as he tends to spend a fair bit of his time upside down but hopefully the back pad will alleviate that so i've got the holes drilled a nice blob of sikaflex 291 and the holes there you go that stuff that's what you need that's brilliant trifold rivets through the holes and i'm just going to pop them in place sure there we go so that's that one in Nice and tight with the rivets there. And obviously no heads on them poking out because that would be really horribly uncomfortable. So it's already fitted with a paddle keep on the one side but not on the other. So starting off with my central hole, I've got the little paddle keep button and the rivet. So the next bit is to put on the side mount carry handles. Ocean kayaks started taking them off kayaks to bring them down to a price point and a profit margin. So first off, you've got to find the balance point, which in this case was just here in front of the um, attachment points for the cables for the rudder. So I've made the two holes there, two holes there. Again, just blob a sick of flex and then we'll rivet that in. There we go, that's good, that's nice and solid. We can lift that now and that's on the balance point. Mike's doing the other side while I grab the next bits to do. There you go, Rosie the river and never looked so sexy. Right, next stage is to start on the anchor trolley system. So, gonna fit pad eyes at the bow and stern. Now the trick with this is to put them as close to the front, as close to the back as possible. So you get the maximum effect. So I'm going to put them that way just because it's a bit neater, about a centimetre down. We've got to come in about a centimetre and a half, two centimetres because the bow is actually quite thick there. So let's get that drilled. So I've got the one rivet in, we've got the seat flex, and now Mike's going to do an upside down riveting shot for us. If I can get it out, which I can't. We'll soon see that. There we go. Okay, so what I've done is put a loop of thick bungee here, tied in a prussic hitch which I've pulled tight with um, a pair of grips, and then I'm just going to melt the ends with a lighter. So there's my pulley block, and that's going to sit there 
and we're going to put the other end the same way and we're going to put the same on that side and the other end as well okay next come the inline next come the inline what the fuck are they called <laughs> okay here we go next is the inline cleats we're going to fit those make sure the left and right as you saw that you put it the right way round so we're going to put it this way so that the angled bit goes backwards so I'm going to put it centralized with the paddle keep just because that gives me an easy point of reference so what happens once you've got your anchor shuttled back to the stern or forward to the bow you then lock one line off in that cleat and that will hold you so there we go it's all ready now for a bit of sicker flex and riveting down I'm going to do the other side okay so I've threaded the line through okay that's a, a braided line you can see we've got the pad eye we've got the knot at the top for the bungee then going on to the pulley block it's a loop of cord that goes to two stainless rings here and here okay and then a small carabiner you don't need a massive carabiner a lot of people use great big ones just extra weight extra faff and it keeps the line further from where it needs to be they're finished off with a centauri knot which is what i use for my fishing as well brilliant knot won't slip, doesn't weaken the line or anything else. Now, having having a free running carabiner with a loop on each end means you can put it either way. So you can leave that connected just to that, trail this out the back and tow someone, or you can have it connected to the front, straight out, be towed by somebody, or clip off to boys or whatever, anything like that. Okay, you can obviously trim these down and uh, burn them off, melt them off okay now this goes forward so when you've shuttled this to the back okay because this is what we do with the anchor trolley yeah you shuttle it to the back like that so anchor and then you pull with this and you clip it up through there i can't remember which line that one and then that ain't going anywhere okay that's jammed in the cleat there so when you do it tie it under tension you want loads of tension okay because you want it tight. You've got a big bit of shock absorption here and the same at the front. That'll take out some of the effects of the swell. And then obviously when you're when you're clipped off and everything, you just stick them both out of the way like that. And that is your anchor trolley system. Fit it to both sides because you can have, as I did the other day, the anchor system fail. I had a, a breakage in my bungee cord that had been on there for many years. Okay, you can see here at the front, I've got it under tension there or you can decide that you need to fish from the left or from the right with your anchoring point or you might want to stick the anchor out on the left hand side and the drogue out on the right this might just fish off the other the other side on the flush mounts now the flush mounted rod holders on this point straight backwards that's fine for carrying rods great launching and landing where you've got sort of rocks on that either side however if you angle it you get a better spread for the trolling so that puts you pointing out say a meter or so depending on your rod length so what what we've done we've we've um, taken the bolts out of the inserts and drilled new holes to refit the flush mounts angled out nice blob of sicker flex using the same hole for the actual um, rod holder though there we go so that's done that's now angled out so that's going to give us a far better spread we'll leave this pad eye here and we can use that as a leashing point for the reel or for something else that we keep in the tank well because we can also use that leashing point there so i've been using sort of tube mounts not this style the round ones normally for our oh, best part of 12 years 15 years 2007 when's that yeah so a long time but yeah they become prohibitively expensive like i said and these these look more secure because the rambles they perish a bit and they they split and so on so yeah we've gone with these and these were a third of the price hopefully they'll stand up to it they seem well made you can tighten and adjust with that wheel there you've got a ratchet there so fingers crossed hopefully mike won't won't have them fail on him and lose rods but i'm lending him the rods anyway so it doesn't really matter it'll be my lookout so Mike's made a judicious bit of use with the hole saw and cut out the bit for which we will put in the mount. So that's going to fit in there that way. Load of sick flex around it. It's the perfect size, but we're going to file it out just ever so slightly so it'll slip in a bit easier. Because if we push it in too hard and we split the hole, which is unlikely but possible, it could be um, 
more of a problem than just taking the time to give an extra mill around it. Jobs are good then. Uh, that's fine. That bit there at the front is for a, for a leash, although I wouldn't trust it. So yeah, that can go straight down. That's absolutely fine. That's pat. Yeah, just sucker flex. Uh, yep. Sucker flex on. That's a lovely tight hole. That. I'm sure, there's a joke in there somewhere. Well, it's very difficult for me to find a tight one. <laughs> So there we go, that's it, job done. So, starting from the front, we've put in the pad eye, the bungee loop for shock absorption, the pulley block, and the anchor trolley line, which runs to the rear. We've got some Solus reflective tape. We've got the side mount carry handles. We've got the paddle keep. We've got the inline cleat, fine line cleat. We've got the flush mounted rod holder at the back angled out. We've got the forward mounted ones fitted, which they just drop in somehow or other. Just got to jiggle them, and then when they're in, you then set that to where you like. We'll have a look at those in detail. More solace. And there. So that. Is it? What do you reckon, then, Mike? You happy with that? I'm happy with that. Good. Can't wait to get out and catch fish now. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant.